Hello and welcome to my channel where I do guides for post-processing software. Uh, today we are inside of on one Futuro 2021 and we're going to do some dodge and burning. Uh, just as a note, I'm trying out some different audio gear today, so if the sound is improved or if it's worse or if I need to work some more on the sound, please tell me in the comments. I, I would really appreciate that. Anyway, uh, dodge and burn. Uh, so what is dodge and burn? Let's uh, take a look from the Wikipedia. So dodging and burning are terms used in photography for a technique used during the printing process to manipulate the exposure of a selected area on a photographic print, deviating from the rest of the image's exposure. In a darkroom print from a film negative, dodging decreases the exposure for areas of the print that the photographer wishes to be lighter. So that's dodging, you're brightening parts of the photo, uh, while burning increases the exposure to areas of the print that should be darker so that's burning you're basically uh, just uh, making everything darker in that area any material with varying degrees of opacity may be used as preferred to cover and or obscure the desired area for burning or dodging one may use a transparency with text design patterns a stencil or a completely opaque material shaped according to the desired area of burning dodging. Many modern digital image editing programs have dodge and burn tools that mimic the effect on digital images. Okay, so that was a bit about dodge and burning. There are many ways to do dodge and burning inside of uh, On One Foot Raw 2021. You can use brushes to do some dodge and burning, like local adjustment and a brush. Uh, you can use, for example, effects for dodge and burning. You can use gradients. You can use uh, radials. There's many possibilities. And brushing is uh, what most people tend to use. But uh, yeah, it's not always ideal because the feathering on the brush you can't really control it too much of course you can feather out the brush but uh, there are ways of uh, doing it in a better way uh, you can also build up your brush with uh, opacity or for example flow so there are ways to make the brush feather perfectly but uh, that involves uh, more work for you and uh, dodge and burning yeah it's a nice effect but you also need to have a decent workflow in my opinion so we're going to take a look at a couple of images I've prepared and we are going to do different ways of dodge and burning on them so let's just jump into this image this image is a HDR image but that doesn't really matter you can use whatever kind of image you want. What you're trying to achieve with dodge and burning is uh, contrast. And you're trying to elevate the dynamic range of your image. And that's what we're going to try and do right now. I've just done a basic edit on this image. Uh, there are things we might want to do with this image. Uh, so we can start with a local adjustment. So I'm going to disable this. We're coming back to this example. So let's say I want to increase the brightness on the water here. I can do so easily by adding an adjustment and just using the brush. Uh, to, to lighten, we of course need to select a preset or adjust the brush as we want it ourselves so i'm going up just a bit 
on the exposure and just a bit on the shadows. And this will brighten whatever area we are brushing into. So with the brush options, I'm going to make sure that the mode is set at painting. It's going to be at 100 in the feather. Opacity is at 100 and the flow is at 100. And we're just going to start painting this uh, brightening in here. So as you can see, we are painting in a lot. That's not too too dangerous or too bad. We can always adjust it later. But let's just continue here. So this this is areas where the sun is hitting or there are some light. And we want to accentuate that. So that's the reason why we are putting in more light in the areas that has light from before. So I don't want to put in light on dark areas like this. You can, but uh, uh, not for this demonstration. Anyway, so we have some light there. This is a bit too bright. We can always adjust it by going down on the opacity. Or you can go down, for example, on the shadows. And let's check without this brightening. And this is with the brightening. Okay, so we've done some dodging. That's nice. Let's just continue here. There. Let's see without again. And this is with the dodging. Now there are different things we can do to build up this dodging and make it a bit more interesting. For example, we can make it a bit hotter. Let's say we go up to plus two on the temp on the white balance. Let's see. This is without and this is with the dodging. As you can see, it's a bit heavy. But let's just go down on the opacity. And already I would say that this is a large improvement. Uh, it's again, it's a bit heavy. So let's go down to around there. I think that's better. Now it's not too obvious. So we've done the dodge. Uh, let's do some burning next to the dodging here. So we are going to darken things now. I'm just going up a bit on the exposure so it's not too dark. And next to the dodging, we're going to burn. So something like this. So you can clearly see that this makes everything a more dynamic image. Uh, and maybe it's more interesting this way, and this is up to you. You might not even like this kind of way to, to do dodge and burning, but that's fine. This is just for demonstration. But it builds up a nice effect, and it makes it a bit more interesting, in my opinion. So, yeah. Something like that. And of course, it's a bit heavy, so we're going down on the opacity. So to something like this, maybe. Let's check without. So it's a bit brighter. And with the burn, it's a bit darker and more dynamic around the water here. I'm going up just a bit there, and I'm going up on the dodge as well. So. To know what we have done, I'm going to name this uh, local, local adjustments. So this is dodge. Or you can name it uh, lighten or brightening or whatever you want. But for this example, I'm going to call it dodge and burn. Uh, 
Yeah, it's a bit heavy still on the burn, so I'm going up just a bit on the exposure there. To something like this. Okay, so this is the brush method. You can use whatever kind of settings you want really, but uh, if you're talking about true dodge and burn, maybe you shouldn't use the other sliders here. Maybe it's the, all about the exposure or shadows or uh, contrasts or whitening. But for me, this is dodge and burn. Uh, it's just that we have a few more options now than what they had in the film days. Even they, they could do a lot in the film days. If you look up some uh, images by Ansel Adams, you can see clearly that he's using dodge and burn to really make that those images uh, more dynamic. And they are truly dynamic and by the way he's an amazing photographer okay so anyway let's go back and disable this and this is another way to do dodge and burn so let's do some dodging here you can see here that i made a few adjustments so i'm pulling up the exposure and I'm pulling up the white balance to plus two and I'm pulling up the vibrance. So this is without and this is with. Now what I'm using here is a, it's a radial actually. So I'm just gonna reset this mask and let's go up. So I'm going into the brush I'm going to this gradient tool and I'm going to select center uh, around the shape. Now I'm going to drop this inside this image where I want it to brighten. Let me just make it a bit smaller. Now by default it's going to be inverted or you need to invert it like this now we are brightening this part of this image uh, of course it's a bit too much right now and uh, let's go and look at this mask so i'm hitting the view button and i'm going into the mask here so you can watch the grayscale uh, overlay you can see that this isn't feathering a lot right now. If we drag out the feather, it's feathering a bit more, but still, I don't think the feather is all that uh, great. So in my opinion, maybe it should be a lot softer. There are ways to do that. Of course, I can increase the feather even more, but then I'm brightening more of the image. So I want to go down on the inner circle instead and that will create a better feathering because it feathers from the inner circle to the outer circle so i'm going down a lot so let's see now uh, if i can just hit this thing and hit the o key to remove this overlay and now we are feathering from this circle to this circle. So instead of having a pretty hard edge or hard feathering, we are actually making the feathering really nice in my opinion. So let's say we want it like a bit like this, maybe drag it out here. And we can always make the outer circle smaller if we want to. And if I want to create more of these circles, I can always copy this mask and I can add a new adjustment. I can even make this into sort of a preset. So you just hit the more button 
and save new style and let's call this uh, dodge radial no i don't think it's gonna save the mask but it's going to save the settings here and let's add an adjustment let's go to more and dodge radial it actually added the mask as well but now we can simply move this and move it to for example here I just go down to something like this so as you can see it's a bit heavy so we can always go down on the opacity and that's the advantage now because I can, if I used a brush and it was the same brush if I went down on the opacity, I would go down on the opacity everywhere where I painted. In this case, maybe I want the opacity to be a bit brighter in this area. And maybe a bit darker in this area. So let's see how that works. So you can see that's a really nice way to do dodge and burn. So let's see without and this is with yeah i think that actually works great for this image so that's how you use radials to do dodge and burn i really recommend that way of using it but it might take you a bit longer but uh, of course it's up to you but that's often the way i use it now we can also do kind of dodge and burn with radials or gradients I mean so let's see I want the sky to be a bit darker of course I can go in and select this gradient I'll just hit it there and let's say we want to make this a bit smaller and something like that so that another way to do uh, dodge and burn let's see uh, I want to make it even smaller there so this is of course simply called a gradient but if we want to we can for example darken one of the corners that's one way this is dark maybe we want to accentuate that make it darker make it more contrasted with the brighter areas here we can simply do that with a gradient so if you remember what we read earlier this is also considered to be dodge and burn now dodge and burn is always to be used to accentuate things to really make things pop for example and uh, so let's say this is uh kind of interesting I want to make this pop just a bit there so I'm going to push the light and preset I know there's a hot light there I want to make it even hotter so I'm going to increase the temp and some vibrance now I want to accentuate that light to do that it's better to use a, a radial than a brush a brush wouldn't make this light natural in my opinion so let's just go and select center and I'm going to drop it there and as you know we need to invert that radial so just hit invert now we are brightening over here I just want to shrink this down really I want to shrink it down all the way so so we have that nice feathering again so let's move it over here and that's a bit too much but let's just uh, decrease the in outer circle something like this and this is without the dodge and this is with the dodge 
So that's kind of nice. If we were using a brush, it would be too, uh, too hard edge or not soft enough, in my opinion. So we could always, uh, for example, accentuate this as well. So we would simply create another circle down there and around the lights, for example, over here. And that's a bit too much, of course, on this one. So let's just go down on the opacity. And that's a pretty hot light. So we could even go up on the white balance. So as you can see, there are many ways to do dodge and burn. Let's say we want to uh, kind of brighten up this area. We pull our radial over here. I'm going to pull out the feathering to something like this, maybe. And just nudge it over like that. So you can see it makes a huge difference. Okay, so that's this image. I'm going over to the next image. We're going to do some dodge and burning using uh, using other effects. Okay, so I'm going under effects here. And now I'm going to use a tone enhancer to do dodge and burn. While I'm doing dodge and burn, I want to accentuate the details and the textures. So I can do that by using a tone enhancer because we have det a detail slider here and I can even make things softer if I want to. So I want to increase the shadows and just a bit of contrast being that we are increasing shadows, you usually use uh, lose some contrast. So maybe something like this. And I want to hit the B key to get the brush. And let's say I want to brighten this area. No, let's say I want to brighten the area or the mid ground, which makes sense actually. I'm just going to hit the O key so I can see what I'm doing. Yeah, I of course need to <laughs> invert the mask. Then we can start painting in. You can see I'm doing mistakes as well here. So let's just paint that effect in here. Let's not paint too much around the sun there. So from here maybe. Yeah, something like that. Let's hit the O key. And let's see if we have some more details in the background or in the mid ground. So let's just go to navigate and go up to 100%. And let's check the before. And this is the after. So it's not doing much. So let's fix that. Let's go up a bit on the shadows and let's go up just a bit on the exposure and a bit on the contrast again and let's check this is without and this is with the dodge i think you can clearly see that there is a difference there so let's say we want to make uh it's a bit more detailed. We can go up on the detail slider, maybe to around 11 and some clarity just to make it more dynamic. And I think actually that helps a lot there. So let's go out to fit view and let's check the before and after. So this is without the effect and this is with the effect. 
so it uh, kind of makes all of the mid ground uh, more interesting so by just using a tone announcer you can use uh, or you can do a lot so there's another way to do it as well what i've done is that i have dupe duplicated the main layer uh, let's activate this layer and this layer of course has the same settings as the layer above because it's duplicated uh, that's fine for now or let's just maybe hmm let's say we want to do something about the foreground i want to make it a bit darker so i'm going down on the midtones and down on the shadows so maybe this looks okay and i want to increase the structure and i want to go up on the magentas to something like this it makes it a bit more dreamy and let's pop the vibrance now i can do some sharpening here if i want to that's the wrong button this one uh, let's go up on the amount to around there so by doing this this way we have a lot of control because we can use tone and color and we can use other effects to enhance this area what i need to do now is actually to go and paint it in from the layer mask so i'm going to invert this mask and i'm going to hit the b key to get the brush and i'm going to make sure it's at painting and whatever feather opacity and flow you want and i'm just going to start and paint the new or the duplicated layer in uh, this is a really smart way to work because then you have suddenly you have a lot of options on the exact area you want to have those options so for example i can go in on effects now and i can add a new effect on this layer or i can remove or whatever if i add this effect let's say i want to add some crunchiness just to make it look really ugly you can see that i'm only applying the grunginess to this area i don't need to paint in the mask anymore so that's just an idea of uh, the level of creativity you can have inside of on one foot row it's uh it's truly amazing i guess uh, this is it for this video it's starting to get long as usual and if you like this video hit that like button if you want to watch more videos from me or support me please hit that subscribe button that really motivates me to continue and thanks a lot to all the new subscribers it's amazing i've had a few just in a couple of days so that's really awesome anyway thanks a lot for watching and i hope to see you again goodbye